Let's get going. It is 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, my name is Michael Egerling. I lead marketing here at Trustero. I'm joined by several of my friends here, as usual, who are going to help us walk through this presentation and also answer your questions as they come in. So um, from top to bottom here on my screen, I have Nick Martin, who is our VP of product, Scott Knufer, who is our Vice President of Operations, Jenna Martin, who leads our customer success team, and MJ Raper, who leads our GRC team. Um, we are here to talk to you about something really exciting that we've been working on for a little while here and, and ties into our messaging and our, and our solutions around AI and what Aero, our AI co-pilot can do for you. Um, and today we're gonna to be talking about security questionnaires and how Aero can help you answer security questionnaires very quickly, uh, leveraging a knowledge base and also leveraging your GRC program. So Nick and his team have been working hard on this for a long time and they're gonna show that off to you today. Just a little couple pieces of housekeeping before we get started. If you have questions, go ahead and use the Q&A panel in Zoom. So just hit that Q&A button in your Zoom taskbar. Our team is here to answer your questions. Um, we'll try to do as much as we can in real time via that Q&A panel. And then when we get to the end uh, of the webinar as well, we can answer some questions live. So keep those questions coming. If we don't get to your questions, we will answer them in the follow-up. If you're joining now, just make sure that you stick around until the end. At the end, there's going to be a couple of QR codes on the screen. Anyone who registers for this webinar is already in line for the beta for um, or for the early access version of security questionnaires. But by clicking on that, that screen and then entering that list, you get moved to the top. And then if you book a demo with Trustero, you get moved to the very, very top. So without further ado, let's kind of get into what we're going to be talking about today. So we're going to introduce you, reintroduce you to those who've been on our webinars before. What is Aero, our AI co-pilot, and what's the compliance AI platform? And then Nick's going to go over a co-pilot demo and show how we're answering security questionnaires with AI. Then we're going to tell you very briefly how to get the co-pilot. It's free, and there's you don't have to be a paying Trust Aero customer to get, to get it, and we'll reiterate that a little later. And then we're going to answer your questions. So pretty brief, pretty brief agenda today. Really quickly, if you haven't been introduced to Trustero before, uh, we are a compliance AI platform. We help companies get to and manage compliance uh, compliance frameworks like SOC 2, HIPAA, GDPR, and we were the first company in the space to introduce AI into our into our platform. What that does is it allows our LLMs to do many, many, many things. Um, and Scott's gonna go over those in detail later to help you get to compliance faster, easier with less thrash and to have better overall visibility into your program and better rigor for your team. So Scott, why don't you tell us a little bit about Aero, which is our big AI co-pilot and what it does for, for our, our customers. Yeah, thank you, Michael. And for those of you uh, that attended a past uh, webinar, uh, you may remember in September, we launched our uh, AI co-pilot that we named Aero. Um, Aero does uh, a lot of things within our platform. While from the very beginning, we had uh, AI tools in our platform like tailored guidance, helping give specific step-by-step uh, -step guidance on how to satisfy controls. Um, we uh, are very proud of the work that we did uh, to launch a co-pilot that is resonant in the platform. Michael, next slide. So as you get, as you guys may remember, if you were on the previous webinar when we launched Arrow, Arrow at that point did six things uh, throughout our platform that drastically changed the amount of work that a Trustero client had to do uh, during their uh, compliance sprint. Um, one of the biggest things, and I'll, uh, before we get into today's session, I'll remind everybody, is the audit scan feature within uh, the Trustero platform. And um, if you uh, get a chance, uh, you should go to our website and look at some of the video content available around uh, audit scan. But Aero uh, has actually been able to audit uh, clients of Trustero, much like a human auditor would, giving you the ultimate preparedness for your compliance sprints. 
Today, uh, I am super excited to spend most of our time talking about the seventh thing that Arrow is now going to do, and that is solving uh, the answering of security questionnaires. And today, I have Nick Martin, uh, our head of product, vice president of product, to talk through and actually give you guys a live demo of the work that the Trust Arrow engineering team has put together around security questionnaires. With that, Nick, I'll pass the torch to you and have you take the, the, the folks here today through our questionnaires. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. So I think many people who are on this webinar are probably uh, quite familiar with the issues surrounding security questionnaires. Uh, but if you're not or need a refresher, um, I think it's it's helpful to first kind of ground us on what are the problems. So um Oftentimes, answering security questionnaires are a key part of kind of the procurement process. So uh, an organization will have to answer security questionnaires in order to unblock deals. Um, and doing those a few at a time here and there uh, can be, you know, a little a little tedious, certainly time consuming, um, but may be tolerable. Uh, at scale, uh, answering security questionnaires can be quite, quite challenging um, and take significant resources and time to manage. So uh, as we've been exploring this space, we've heard a number of anecdotes from different organizations. So, you know, one Fortune 500 we talked to, they actually have a, a team of five people uh, whose entire job is just to be responsive to security questionnaires. Um, we've talked to um, uh, organizations that have backlogs of sometimes of hundreds of security questionnaires that they actually need to get through. Um, another executive we spoke to at a, a large organization personally spends about 20% of his time just answering security questionnaires to unblock deals. Um, and then I, I know in my experience, you know, I had a, a relatively straightforward security questionnaire that was sent over to me recently in the last few weeks. It was only about uh, five questions, but in order to answer those you know, completely and to answer them in the way that would be best for that audience actually took me um, about an hour and I needed, I needed help from MJ, our head of uh, governance, risk and compliance to make sure I was really kind of uh, uh, answering them the way that the, the requester wanted to see them. So quite a lot of time and effort um, to answer those. Um, the, the second challenge is not just anybody can answer those questions. So typically you need to have significant knowledge and, and particular skills and domain expertise in order to even be capable of answering those questions. Um, and, then, and then the final thing is uh, information can get out of date quickly and isn't necessarily well understood throughout the org. So Another um, another one of uh, our advisors I was speaking to who's headed up um, uh, GRC functions in very large organizations uh, mentioned to me uh, upon you know joining a new a new company um, uh, just trying to understand for his own benefit uh, what do they do in terms of practicing uh, their disaster disaster recovery procedures how often do they do that and that relatively straightforward question. Uh, he had to ask 10 people and it took two days to get the answer to. Um, so what I'm going to take you guys through today is a way to address all of these um, that significantly re uh, reduces the time and effort um, and improves the accuracy and actually helps knowledge pervade the organization. So next slide, please. So uh, uh, Scott mentioned the, the six items that Arrow already does. Uh, this is the seventh. Uh, AI powered questionnaire answering, and this comes in two flavors. Um, so what we're calling uh, uh, Arrow uh, QC, so questionnaire copilot free and questionnaire copilot advanced. So the free version is based on uh, a knowledge base. And um, again, from talking to uh, many different folks who've struggled with security questionnaires over the years, we know that a pretty straightforward way of attacking this problem is to build up a knowledge base of questions and previous answers over time. Um, and, uh, and so many organizations already have that resource available to them. However, it still takes time and effort to 
hunt down the right questions, match them up with new questions, consider whether the, the previous answers still apply. Um, so we'll we'll show you some uh, some stuff that you can do to actually leverage an existing knowledge base, but use Arrow to answer those questions uh, very quickly. Um, and then we've got a more advanced version, uh, so the QC Advance. Um, and this version, it can leverage a knowledge base, but uh, it can also answer novel questions. And so the way it, it does that is uh, so no, no knowledge base required um, uh, if you are uh, using our GRC platform, that platform is full of a wealth of knowledge about controls, policies, evidence, risk, et cetera. Um, and we actually leverage all of that knowledge that's already in the platform to answer questions in a way that is um, up to date and complete. So I will I will take you through both of those options. Okay. And just just to emphasize what you're saying there, Nick, when you say if you're using our GRC platform, this is any any Trustero customer, right? Any Trustero customer has this access. That's right. So this is uh, available to any of our customers who who are are um, are using our full GRC platform. Um, the free option will be available out there in a self-service uh, form, and uh, we'll be doing a beta of that uh, right away. And all you need for that one to work is just a knowledge base, so you can get up and moving with that one in minutes. The GRC platform version would mean you'd need to be a customer of ours, uh, so perhaps doing a SOC 2 or ISO 27001, something like that. Um, and Thanks. then um, if, you, if you're using that platform, then we can answer questions uh, leveraging that. Yeah, okay. So let's jump into a demo and I will share my screen here. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna take you guys through sort of uh, three different versions of this. And um, our system today, uh, so what, I, what I've got here is this is the Trustero product you're seeing here in, in this browser window, um, and you're seeing the knowledge base page. So we're going to add a knowledge base, and we're going to throw some questions at it. And then we're going to uh, throw some questions at it that actually aren't in the knowledge base. But this demo account happens to be set up with uh, SOC 2, uh, SOC 2 framework. So the policies and controls for that, as well as the um, as well as some evidence, and we'll see how it performs on those novel questions. So I'll I'll start first with the knowledge base. Um, today, this is all just managed with CSV files. So uh, basically, in spreadsheets, I, these are uh, on purpose very very simple examples, but this will scale up to hundreds of questions and answers quite easily. Um, so I'll I'll start. Uh, so with, with that in mind, I'll start here with uh, our little knowledge base. Uh, and all the knowledge base is, it's just question, answer. So what's, what an organization would do is they would collect all this. Maybe you already have a spreadsheet that looks like this. Um, and then you would save it and, and upload it to us. So in this case, we've got three questions. Uh, the first question is about um, details of the organization's data backup and recovery procedures and how well they align with industry standards. So then we've got an answer here. Uh, second question is about, does the organization perform uh, information security risk assessments and when, when do they do those? Um, and then the final question is about uh, separating um, production and non-production environments. Um, and so each of these has an answer. Uh, um, and so we're going to upload those into the platform. We'll do that right now. Uh, so there's our knowledge base, uh, and so it's got the three questions, and we're done. So they're in there. Now, let's start throwing some questions at it, and I will. Uh, we're going to start with just asking the exact same questions, and I, and I can show you that in a spreadsheet in just a moment. Uh, but. Uh, so we're going to start with this example. This is something that uh, organizations are often doing uh, already. Um, so, you know, there'll be a manual process. You get the questions. Oh, I need to hunt through the knowledge base. Uh, and maybe it's, a you know, um, just using simple text search. Uh, perhaps there's something a little bit more advanced in, a, in some kind of knowledge management product. Um, and so this is just showing uh, the 
ability to answer those questions that you've already seen in their exact form. And um, what you'll see is uh, we are returning the answers. And these answers here will look very similar, although not necessarily identical to what was in the knowledge base. And the reason for this is we're relying on generative AI. Um, under the covers, there's actually it actually understands the semantics of the question as well as what a good answer will look like. Um, and so it does come back with slightly different wording typically, um, but the meaning is exactly the same. Uh, and so we'll see here, this is referencing a disaster recovery plan. Uh, it's saying it's uh, following best practices in a SOC 2 type two. Uh, it talks about how that disaster recovery plan details roles, responsibilities, backup strategies, et cetera. And if we go back to the knowledge base and I open that again, um, we'll see very similar answers. So di di uh, disaster recovery plan establishes the backup and recovery uh, process aligned with industry best practices, et cetera, et cetera. So very, very similar answer there. Uh, so that's the kind of, if, you, if you've been doing it yourself, this will help you do that a little bit faster, or if you're using a knowledge management tool, uh, it'll help you do it a little bit faster. Um, what if we, though, throw uh, similar but not the same uh, questions at it? How's it going to respond then? So I've got some different wordings. Uh, we'll, we'll start this processing right now, um, and we'll take a look. So we'll, we'll get this teed up. It's going to start answering. Um, and uh, let's take a look here. Actually, I think I may have thrown. Yes, okay. So um, you guys can see these questions are slightly different wording. So what are your organization's data backup and recovery procedures? Um, so what makes this one a little bit different than the than the knowledge base? And there's, there's the file there. Um, you can see it's actually worded quite a, quite a bit different differently uh, and a little bit more terse. So instead of provide details for your organization's data backup and recovery procedures, it's just saying, what are the data backup and recovery procedures? Um, and it knows how to answer that question and it replies in a very similar manner uh, as it did before. So this is, um, you know, you don't have to do the work to actually do the question matching yourself. Uh, Arrow will be able to sort it out and determine if you've actually seen this question before or not. And then if so, it will rely on the information that's already in there. Um, uh, this question also, uh, uh, in the previous version, it um, it did talk about the cadence, but this the, the way this one is worded is when. So that's the, that's the main part of the question. And it's answering that di quite directly. So in the first sentence, it says, our organization performs information security risk assessments annually or when significant changes occur, which is exactly what we said in the answer that's in the knowledge base. Um, uh, but, it's, but it's directly answering that uh, first rather than say doing a copy and paste of what the answer was before. So making it easier for the person who's asking the question to get straight to the answer that they want. Um, so that's a, a, you're getting a boost here with not like with differently worded questions, but things that are still in the knowledge base. Um, and now, so Nick, just to be, just to be the layman observer for a second, yeah. and the most layman observer, this is like, when you talk about answering nuanced questions, what the difference here between searching, searching in a knowledge base or or doing something like what an RFP tool does, which is answering a question exactly is, because this is an LLM, a large language model, it's doing some reasoning and it's looking for the best answer from the sources it has. That's exactly right. Yep, so it can, any kind of uh, difference in wording or even slightly different questions, it knows how to contextualize those and then reply uh, back with the best data that it has in the knowledge base. That's right. Uh, yeah. So that is really great if you have the content in the knowledge base. Well, what about answering some novel questions? So questions that actually don't exist in the knowledge base. And so we've actually got a couple of those uh, here. And so I'll pull these up uh, uh, quickly and then we'll throw them at it. So the first one is, 
how does the organization protect laptops from malware? And then what are the organization's data encryption practices? So th that's quite a lot different than anything that we put in this little micro knowledge base we have. So we're gonna throw those novel questions at it and see what it does. Uh, so that's this not in KB. Um, and uh, so there's the two questions. We're gonna throw it at this. Now, I mentioned before that this um, account uh, is actually, so it's a demo account and it contains um, a SOC2, kind of a dummy SOC2 along with data. Um, and when it does not find stuff related to this question in the knowledge base, that's what it's gonna rely on. And so let's quickly take a look um, here at what it might find. Um, oh, sorry, I went to the wrong place. Controls, here we go. So uh, laptop protection. Uh, it just so happens that we have a laptop protection and management control, uh, which in turn has a asset management policy. And it's going to, uh, uh, this contains a rich amount of data on what someone should do with respect to laptops. And you'll see here, this section of the policy actually describes a variety of things that we do to protect the laptop, not just from malware, but other things. Um, and the control also covers, it does specifically mention malware, but it also uh, mentions a few other things. Um, so, uh, and Nick, for for those who haven't uh, done a webinar with us before, you're just you're just looking at the compliance AI platform here, right? You're, this is just the Trustero platform yeah. with a SOC two with SOC two controls in the demo account. That's exactly right. So this is representative of what many of our customers do uh, in order to protect their laptops in the con uh, the context of a SOC two. So we've just loaded up our compliance. AI platform with the same stuff. And uh, as you can see, so Arrow was able to pull out information uh, not in the knowledge base. So let's take a look and see what it, what it came up with here. So our organization protects laptops from malware through secure configuration and handling of user endpoint devices, which includes restrictions on software installation, requirements for software updates, and storage device encryption. We also employ, employ continuous monitoring of cloud-based accounts and services. So this is straying a little bit, but talking about broader what's going on. Uh, use of antivirus systems and intrusion detection systems. These measures are part of our laptop protection and management and threat detection controls. So it's referencing the controls where it found the information, uh, which aligned with the SOC 2 framework, uh, because it knows those controls are related to SOC 2. Uh, so that's how it was able to come up with that answer. Um, similarly, uh, for question two here about data encryption, let's briefly show the controls we have here. Um, there are a couple related to encryption. There's one about production data at rest, another about production data in transit. And if we crack open the production data at rest, we'll see there's some evidence here. So this is referencing evidence collected from a cloud environment. And let's see what this has to say. Um, organization adheres to robust data encryption practices. We use RSA 2488 as our key algorithm for data encryption. We employ cryptography for protecting information on mobile user endpoint devices or storage media transmitted over networks. Here it's referencing that evidence. So it's saying this stuff is all encrypted because, because the contents of the evidence show that it's encrypted. Um, we follow approved standards, cryptographic algorithms, cipher strength, et cetera. Um, so it's gone out, found the relevant information, told you uh, why it's made the determination it has, and then uh, it's giving you pointers to things if you want to go and uh, take a deeper look. So. On both of these, um, in my experience, uh, these are these are exactly the kind of questions that a security practitioner who's asking them would want to want to receive. So, um, so just to to kind of wrap it up, we've got the knowledge base thing, which allows people to get up and move quickly based on the kind of the uh, perhaps the very long history of answering security questionnaires they already have, 
And we have uh, this very new uh, differentiated capability, which uh, can actually look at the uh, evidence and other content that is always up to date and give you very thorough and pointed um, uh, uh, reasoning about why it's answering the questions the way it is. So that's it from my side. Nick, re really quick, will you just show and explain how um, we would export these answers? Sure. Yeah. So today, uh, this is uh, uh, this feature is a uh, uh, relatively young. So we wanted to we prioritize getting it getting it to work first, uh, and and so the UX will be a little bit uh, more streamlined in the future. But for today. Uh, you can download the answers as a CSV. Um, so you could take those, let's say you receive the questionnaires in, a, um, in an email, for example, uh, you could download it and just copy paste it right back into that email with your answers. And of course, you're not satisfied with that. that uh, That's right. It's going to get smoother and, and better uh, here shortly. Yep. Uh, thanks for that. Okay, so I'll take back the screen and... Let me just find my Zoom controls here. Okay, we did have a couple questions coming in, just wondering how to get this. So I, I promised those people this would be on the screen. So um, we're gonna get to, um, Scott's gonna go over some of this stuff in a second, but I just wanted to uh, mention to the people that were asking, this is where those are those links that you're looking for. Okay, Scott, you want to take take yeah. us home and talk about what the next steps are? Yeah, so uh, really excited about this functionality, uh, folks. Um, this was a this was a huge accomplishment. We believe that um, uh, certainly Nick and I have been on many many calls with you know companies that are in the Fortune 500 all the way down to early startups where security questionnaires, the ability to answer them quickly. Uh, and accurately, the uh, ability to automate uh, many of the answers and save time uh, is one of their hugest, uh, biggest hurts. Um, so I, I would just say we're we're excited about uh, launching this. Um, two ways to sign up. Uh, certainly, you can uh, scan that QR code on the left and get access to our questionnaire copilot. Uh, as Nick pointed out, uh, there are two versions. There is a free version where you could start to leverage the knowledge base right away. Uh, and then certainly on the right-hand side, uh, we would love you to schedule a demo with us to really take a deep dive in the entire co compliance AI capability. Um, we are um, uh, really pumped up about helping you, you and your teams uh, simplify your not only your compliance efforts, but also uh, your GRC efforts. So please take us up uh, on connecting. Uh, with that, we'll leave this up on the screen uh, for a bit longer. You can certainly... Uh, we do have some questions we're going to also, Scott. Just making sure hey, that... Say that again? We are going to get to some questions too. Oh, yes. Yes. And we are going to get to some Q&A, but certainly take us up on the demo. We'd love to chat with you one on one. So thank you again for attending. OK, so we have a bunch of questions, which we love. Sometimes you get none. <laughs> so we like to get we like to get some questions in. OK, so I think MJ is going to pop on and answer one of these questions for us. MJ, if you wouldn't mind coming on. Um, so the question is. Is this secure? Is this fee will this feature provide a vendor score regarding their security position? MJ, can you come on and answer that one for us? Yeah, absolutely. I will be glad to, Michael. I honestly hit the wrong button on that. <laughs> uh, well, Nick, Nick can help us this one on this one. Too. I got super excited because we were getting all the questions and I was like, yes. And I was responding to them really fast, accidentally clicked it. But we do have a question here and the question is, is this feature will provide a vendor score regarding their actual security position? So for this specific question, Nick, do you want to jump in on this? Because yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah, thanks, MJ. So there's a whole um, 
whole other related bit of work around kind of third-party risk and third-party risk management and, and security questionnaires are a key component. Uh, we're aiming to have a, a pretty comprehensive third-party risk management uh, in uh, Q1. So this doesn't directly score. This is more about answering, like being responsive to those questions, which we know can pile up and consume a ton of time. Um, but I totally agree that having kind of a lens into uh, the vendors you depend on, that's another pain point that's come up uh, quite a bit and is something we're actively working on as well. Yeah, um, I would just add uh, to that that um, uh, we're moving incredibly fast. I think for those of you that have been a part of this webinar series from the beginning, you can see that Trastero uh, is aiming to not just help you with your uh, compliance uh, and security posture, but also help uh, companies with evaluation of others. And so be, be watching our webinar series, because as Nick just pointed out in Q1, there's a lot of vendor management uh, functionality that we intend to bring to market. Okay, we've got a bunch more here that are coming in. So this one is kind of a little bit forward looking, Nick, but do all questions need to be uploaded via Excel? And it's forward looking because I know you're going to want to elaborate on kind of what's what you're working on with the team. Yeah. So a spreadsheet is just the, the easy way to get it out the door. So it's actually, it's technically a CSV file, uh, which commonly is edited with a spreadsheet. So you could, um, you can edit them in Excel or Google, Google Docs or, uh, you know, whatever kind of spreadsheet tool you want to use. And then you just export it as a CSV. Uh, so that's just a, it's like a really easy format for us to move around. Uh, in the future, uh, there's going to be more inside the app in terms of being able to uh, post the questions uh, uh, as well as being able to update and manage that knowledge base. So this was a way just to get the the most powerful part of it, which is the AI powered answering out into customers' hands as fast as we possibly could. And then, yeah, we'll make those on-ramps and off-ramps better and easier in the future. Perfect. Um, a couple things that came in that I'm just gonna knock out really quick. Um, so somebody had asked um, if, if this feature is available only for the one year of free use of the platform or is it a separate service? So I'm pretty sure you're referring to our special offer for small and mid-sized businesses. So we offer our, our solution for free up to a year in expectation of you getting a SOC 2 or an ISO 27001, um, which is still available and contact us if you're interested in that. But no, this is actually um, completely distinct and different from that. So um, Nick, Nick showed two things. He showed, he showed questionnaires free and questionnaires advanced. Questionnaires free is going to be a standalone solution that you can just down, you can just log into our web app right from the website, uh, very shortly here. And that's why we're going to offer, we're offering the betas here. So by getting onto this, this early access list, um, using the link to the left, you're just going to get the first access to this solution to use absolutely free, um, uh, as soon as it's ready, which is coming very shortly. Um, if you, if you are using, if you're doing the on-demand program through Trustero, which we basically just hand you our, the keys to our entire platform, plus we hand, we give you access to our customer success team and our GRC team, you're getting the full Trustero solution, including the advanced version of Questionnaire Copilot that Nick shared um, uh, in his demo there. So hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, feel free to email anybody here on this uh, on, on on the screen here. We'll get back to you immediately and help you with that. Um, I think we had a couple of other questions questions get answered over the chat, and then I have one more here. It was do I need to be a Trustero customer to use this? For the first version, Nick showed you do not. You can be you can be an unpaid Trustero customer. Or you, you're a be a trustero user, but there's no pay pay for that. Um, when will this be available, Nick? Yeah, so beta, uh, we're starting right away, um, and I think it'll be in people's hands in January. So we're we're finding uh, good beta customers to work with right now. So definitely apply if you're interested. Perfect. Um, I think there's a question. There's a question that got answered, but I think it's worth answering live. And it was, can you upload questionnaires such as SIGLITE, CAI, 
CAIQ, et cetera. And the AI can analyze the responses and flag any issues for or showstoppers. Yeah, you absolutely can. Yeah. So you can throw a complete SIG at it. You could throw a CAIQ at it. Um, you know, SIG is basically uh, about all the uh, policies and governance that you've got in the organization. And so that's where the advanced version of the copilot would really shine uh, because it's got access to all the policy and control language. And so it would be able to uh, really uh, do exceptionally well on a, on a SIG or SIG light. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, Here's a few, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, Michael, we are over time. So I appreciate people hanging out. Uh, we're going to answer a couple more questions here, uh, but uh, certainly wanted to thank people for staying a little long. Yeah. Thank you for, I hadn't noticed. <laughs> um, so perfect. Uh, so we'll answer one more. And then if you, uh, there will be a respond, you can respond directly to us on the email that's going to get sent here in a few hours. So last one, and this is another forward looking one. Can I set up expiration dates on the answers? Why? Because data gets old would be nice to, would be nice to have alerts when an answer needs to be reviewed. Yeah. So we're actually, um, uh, so I think that's an interesting feature idea. Certainly the idea of stale answers in the knowledge base is a big uh, area of interest for us. And that's where the advanced version of the product can be very helpful because um, it just, it knows what the state of things are today. Uh, um, and we're thinking through different options on kind of how to manage the life cycle of the Q and A's that are in the knowledge base. I think flagging for follow-up is definitely an interesting idea. Um, and we're exploring a couple of other things as well. Awesome, awesome okay. Nick. Great. Awesome, Nick. Great job. Uh, again, I wanted to thank everybody for coming. Please take advantage of our uh, demo that we're offering here um, and early access. Um, certainly reach out to me or Nick or Michael if you have any questions or um, want to chat one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, again, we are uh, very thankful that you took the time out of your busy day to uh, spend it with us. So we'll look forward to seeing everybody soon. Uh, thank you for joining uh, our webinar. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.